is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's ha something that hasn't happened since late 2015. We finally have a new iMac. We've got the 27-inch iMac in for review. Now, usually we do more mobile products, laptops, you know, smartphones, occasionally some cameras and things like that, but we do the occasional all-in-one, particularly if it's unusual, like the Surface Studio. Well, since it's been so long since Apple's refreshed the iMac, and since our video editor happens to use them and have bought one, taking advantage of it, we're going to review it now. Well, I may have a lot of complaints when it comes to what Apple's been doing with the MacBook Pro lately, especially the astronomic pricing. But one nice thing about the iMac, the pricing has stayed about the same, and you get better and better stuff inside. Notably, when they start introducing that 5K display, which is now standard on the 27-inch iMac, uh, you've got a quad-core CPU in here. You start with the Core i5 quad-core. It's a desktop CPU, 65 watt. You can also get it with the Core i7, up to 64 gigs of RAM. It still has that RAM door in the back as ever. It's the only user accessible upgradable part here. Anything else involves pulling that display off the front and is, you know, technician sort of thing only. You've got AMD graphics. Apple's in love with AMD lately, but the AMD Radeon Pro 500 series that's in here is perfectly good for pro apps, and Apple never positions themselves as making a gaming product. It's pretty good stuff, and if you look at anything comparable in Windows land with these kind of specs, you're looking at about the same price. So I don't have complaints about the pricing here. It's justifiably priced, I think. Still in the box, you get the wireless keyboard. It's not an extended keyboard. It's small. It's light. It has relatively low travel. It's Bluetooth. Pairs up automatically when you boot it up. You know, with Macs, you don't have a traumatic setup experience ever. Though, to be fair, Windows has gotten pretty easy, too, these days. And you get the magic mouse, too, the kind you can touch and pet. You know, you scroll by rubbing your finger across the top surface, that sort of thing. The design is unchanged from the late 2015 model, and you know, it still looks pretty gorgeous. I can't think of anything that they should do. It's still relatively very thin. Of course, it bows in the back. It's thickest in the middle on the back. What has changed over the generations is it gets cooler and quieter. And looking at something, say you're upgrading from a three or four year old iMac, this one is going to be noticeably cooler and quieter when you're pushing it, which is nice. Another important addition, besides all the ports that are in the same place as always on the back, which is a little bit inconvenient, like you got your SD card slide, you got multiple USB 3.0 ports, you have your headphone jack, you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. Yay. Uh, you know, right now there's not a lot of Thunderbolt peripherals. It's not like you need a dock because it's a desktop, it's got enough ports. But for using external GPUs in the future, that is kind of really wow. You know, if you really want to super tune this in the future to get it going for 8K video, whenever 8K video has become standard, you know there's a possibility of doing that. So I like that a lot. Configurations run from $17.99 to $22.99. We have the middle $19.99 configuration. Of course, you can build to order and you can get more RAM, SSD, all that sort of thing. By the way, do not, unless you're a real novice and you're afraid of doing anything on your computer, do not pay Apple for the RAM upgrade. One thing that's kind of stupid and insulting is all the base models start with 8 gigs of DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM. That part's not insulting. That's nice. They're SO DIMMs, which is the small form factor like you use in gaming laptops. Uh, but they charge a crazy amount of money to upgrade, like 200 bucks to go from 8 to 16 gigs. Just go to the store and on sale you can usually find two 8 gig modules for 99 bucks. In fact, that's what we did. So yeah, do it yourself. There's a little door in the back, there's a little push button release, really easy to do. And you can go up to 64 gigs, so that's pretty nice. You still get start out with a Fusion drive, as Apple calls it, which is a hard drive with a large cache on it. So that speeds up the OS load times, some key application launch times. It feels faster than it did from the, the original Fusion drives from four years ago or so. Not going to be as fast as an SSD, though. One terabyte is standard. You can go two, three terabytes. If you'd rather have fast storage, there are SSDs. You can get a 256 gig SSD. That's like a $100 upcharge. If you want to go up to a 512 gig SSD, that's $300. And, you know, it, it's going to make the machine feel faster for load times. And, and that sort of thing. So that that is nice, of course. All three of those base configurations have a quad-core i5. That's a four-core, four-thread desktop CPU, 65 watts, not a mobile CPU. Good times with that. And if you want to go up to a core i7-7700K, then you can do that as well. So you've got a Good selection of CPUs there. Honestly, I think the Core i5, unless you know who you are, if you really need more, it's going to be adequate probably for most people there. If you're doing professional photo editing, 
perfectly fine. If you're doing 4K video editing like we do, actually, it's pretty darn adequate. But if you're doing a whole lot of motion work, that sort of thing, you probably want to think about the i7 option. There's been a minor refresh to AMD Radeon Pro 500 series graphics. So that's about 10% faster than the 400 series, a little bit faster, obviously, than what you're looking at for the, the 300 series. And we have the middle configuration, so you can get that with the Radeon Pro 570, and that only has two gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. The middle one, the 575, with four gigabyte of GDDR5 VRAM, that's a pretty nice sweet spot configuration. You can go up to the 580 with eight gigabytes of VRAM inside. Performance, like I said, we're, you're looking about 10 to 20% performance improvement from the previous generation in terms of graphics performance. So it's more than a tiny increment of Polaris, but it's also because the, the IMAX graphics previous generation was a little bit older out of date compared to say the 2016 MacBook Pro. For those of you who really, really have high demands, the iMac Pro is coming in December. That's the black aluminum one. That's going to have Intel Xeon CPUs up to 18 cores and AMD Vegas top of the line GPU, which is really competitive with around the NVIDIA GTX 1080 GPU or so. That one starts at $5,000. That's a whole other can of worms available in December. We'll talk about that when December comes. The 5K display is 5,120 by 2,880 pixels. Uh, just like the last gen 5K display, the only thing that's changed is it is brighter now. Apple claims 500 nits. We measured 536 nits for something that's going to be used solely indoors. That's pretty searingly bright. Supports the P3 color gamut, and the color gamut on this is excellent. This is just a treat to use. If you're upgrading from one of the older 2K iMacs, it's a uh, <laughs> wow. It's, you're going to like this. It's full sRGB, 92% of Adobe RGB, 88% of NTSC. It's all good here. Contrast is pretty decent on it, too. All, all in all, I mean, if you're, again, a 4K video producer, if you're doing photo editing professionally, this is fantastic. And not to mention Netflix and YouTube 4K is going to look awful nice on it, too. And it's nice. Now, in terms of performance, I know there's some of you who wish Apple would go back to NVIDIA because you want to play your Steam library on this and get the maximum performance. It does better for pro apps than it does for gaming, honestly. I mean, this is fine for Diablo 3 and the usual Tomb Raider tests, that sort of thing. It's fine for Overwatch, actually, too. It's, the benchmarks on this fall, it depends on the test you're running. Unigine in Heaven never does real great on this, for example, and it scores around a GTX 1050 equivalent on Unigine in Heaven. But if you take a look at Cinebench R15, which is a little bit more real world pro apps kind of looking, it does quite well. You can see the score right there. And that's similar to actually uh, going close to a GTX 1070 there. So it really depends on what you're doing with this. And again, anything pro apps related is going to be stronger. And anything that Apple makes is going to run better because they do a lot of optimizations for AMD, which means that so you can see us running both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. You're going to have the fastest export times and the best performance still with Apple's own Final Cut Pro on this. So that's the 27-inch iMac for 2017 with Intel 7th generation KB Lake inside and AMD 500 series Radeon Pro GPUs. Yeah, like I said, there's, there's a lot of all-in-ones out there, and the iMac originally made it a thing, you know? And they come in all price ranges. Obviously, Apple deals in the high end. Even the 21-inch iMac is pretty high end, and I'm actually stoked to see things like coming with a 4K display and the option of having dedicated graphics. The 27-inch still remains a go-to product for those of you who are doing photo and video editing, particularly 4K video editing, because it's power enough, powerful enough to do it. You've got workstation-level performance there. Not super high and little workstation performance, but a graphics card that's oriented towards pro apps, not as much gaming, for example. Strong quad-core CPUs inside and that 5K display, which really helps justify the price. If you look at other all-in-ones in the world of Windows, you'll notice that, you know, they start out as cheap as four or $500, and the specs are pretty poor. A lot of them have mobile CPUs inside, no dedicated graphics. When you look at something like the XPS 27 from Dell or Lenovo's Y910, the gaming 27 inch all in one, you start to get the specs that are like this and you're looking at $2,000 and you're still not getting a display as good as this. So I may have a lot of complaints about the MacBook Pro series these days and whether it's worth it, but I would still say if you're looking for something with high end 
performance, high-end display, and still a beautiful design and lovely quality. The, the, the iMac is still where it's at. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including the 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro and others. And thumbs up if you like this video.